Hello, thank you for joining me. This video is part one in a three-part series talking about shuttle tatting with buttons. And in this first part, I'm going to talk about a pattern using rings and chains, where you're making rings joined to each ring of the button, reversing, making a chain, reversing, making a second ring, and then all the way around. I will put the description, the full pattern in the description box below, but this is the diagram version and the notated version, and I will show you how to do this. These two examples show this is size 10. This turns out to be about a little less than an inch and a half. And this is using a, a 5 8 inch button with size 10 thread, 15 millimeter button. This is size 20 thread with a 12 millimeter button or half inch button. And this turns out to be a little over an inch. There are two ways that you can start this pattern either the continuous thread method, CTM, or you, if you have two shuttles or two colors, you can tie the ends together, tat your first ring, and hide the ends in the stitches. In this video, I'm going to show starting with the CTM method. And I personally like to join my first ring with the button face down. The rings then will be, the rings right side up will be to the back of the button. And when you turn it over, the right side of the button, the chains will be right side up. Right side, wrong side, tatting is a subject in itself. And I may talk about that in a, in a next video. Um, I don't particularly focus too much on right side, wrong side, but for buttons, I tend to. So when I join to a button, I join with the button right side down. So you're going to start this pattern with ring A, which is five join five. So you're going to start your ring with your thread around your hand and tat your first five stitches. One, two, three, four, five. Now you're going to join to the button just like you were joining to a pico. You're just going to join into a ring, into a hole of the button. And when you do this, take a crochet hook, any size that you want, just make sure that it can fit through the hole of the button and bring your thread back through. And you also want to make sure when you are pulling the thread through that you're not splitting the thread. Make sure you get all of the strands of the thread. So you pull a loop up, pinch that, Take your shuttle, put it through the loop, and I usually put my pick through there so you're keeping the two sides of the loop even and straight. Pull the tension on your hand to bring the ring or the loop back close to the button, having the two sides laying flat, and just when you start practicing this, just pretend that the button isn't there. You're, you're, you're joining to a pico, basically. Now you do the second half of the stitch, flip that, and that locks it to begin with. Pinch that because it can still slide. Do the next stitch, that locks it. That way this, this isn't going to move. And there's a first of your second five. There's one, two, three, four, five, with your button joined. Put the two ends together, 
close your ring. And your first attempt at this may or may not look that nice. This does require some practice. When you turn it over, you want to make sure that your ring is sitting nice and close to the button with the join even. Just keep practicing on that. All right, so you've done your ring. It's joined. You reverse now, and you are going to do a chain of 10. And the repeat, well, let's do this first. Do a chain of 10. Same way you do any chain. Pull that close. One, two, three, four. Ten. There's your chain of ten. Reverse. You're going to do a second ring of five, join five, and you're joining to the same hole in the button. You do another ring. One, two, three, four, five, Put your crochet hook through that hole, pull your thread through, making sure you catch all of the strands and it's not split. Okay, and you can see there's thread here. You're going to put your shuttle through there and using your, your tension on your fingers, you're just going to adjust that. That's why holding this is important. You're pulling, you're reducing that thread there and bringing your join, your ring, close to the base of the button. Do your second half, pinch, stitch to lock. That's one, two, three, four, five. Close your ring. And there's your two joints. And that is the first corner. Reverse. You're going to do another chain of 10. One, two, Seven, eight, nine, ten. Pull that close. That is the repeat. Ring, chain, ring, chain. You're going to do that three more times for a total of four all the way around the button. So then you would reverse, start your next ring, and join into this hole. I tend to keep all of my buttons by color in boxes like this. 
when you get to the end, you're going to have the last chain just finished off like this. You're just going to, if you want to use the tatting thread to sew it to something, leave enough to thread it into a needle and sew it on. If not, then just leave enough thread ends to tie a knot at the base of your first ring. Here, tie a knot there, pull that tight, and then I have sewn the ends into this first ring. That is the wrong side, and that is the right side. And that is a simple motif that you can use to practice joining to a button with tatted lace. I hope you keep practicing. Have fun. Thank you for watching.